What a magnamazing day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Today is Tuesday, 2-6-2024. And as I was doing my evening and morning devotion, what came to me was the greatest gift. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. The greatest gift. Romans 8, 37 says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. The greatest gift. Matthew 10, 28 says, Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. The greatest gift. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 through 24 says, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. The greatest gift. I leave you with this. Can you trust someone you don't respect? Can you respect someone you don't trust? Can you love someone you don't trust or respect? Think about that for a second. Now let me ask you this. Can you trust God if you don't respect him? Can you respect God if you don't trust him? Can you love God if he does not have your trust or respect? Think about these questions and bear with me for a second. The greatest gift. A few days ago, I had the pleasure of exchanging a few text messages with a childhood friend who I had kept in contact with off and on through the years. I have felt I owed this man dearly based on events that took place in high school with a gun and it altered the course of our lives. The one and only time we talked about this event, he told me, man, your parents would have beat you senseless and my parents or family really didn't care. The greatest gift. I had always said if God allowed it, I would give him a certain amount of money to take care of himself and his family. But I had never told him until a few months ago. My plans to clear what I felt was a debt that needed to be paid had been in full motion. And some hours after we finished texting, the Lord placed upon my heart the greatest gift. Matthew 29, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Proverbs 16, 9 says, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. See, I had a whole plan, my plan, and the Lord put it on my heart that the greatest gift you can give anyone is not money, fame, material possessions, or anything earthly. The greatest gift you can give anyone is love through reasons to trust and have faith in God and how to get on the road for salvation of their souls through Jesus Christ. This way, Jesus can make them fishers of men. See, a fisherman under the guidance of Jesus never runs out of food to feed his family. The greatest gift. 1 Peter 1, 6-9 says, So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. The greatest gift. Luke 5, 9 through 11 says, For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught. 
as they were the other, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishing for people. As soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. They say you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make them drink. When you lead a horse to the living water of the salvation of Jesus, you do not have to make them drink. They will drink freely. You can give a man a fish and feed him for a day. Or you can teach a man to fish and feed him for a lifetime. Matthew 7 12 says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the laws and the prophets. See the heading before this verse says the golden rule. As we as people we treat others so bad and expect them to take it when if we follow the golden rule the world will be a much better place. Everyone cares about someone no matter how many people a person has killed children or women they have abused people they have robbed people they have stole from or whatever the case may be that was detrimental to that person there is someone in our lives that we will not want to experience terror or defeat of how we treat others so negatively that is why the golden rule is right for every occasion the greatest gift today this message is for everyone being pushed to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pick up the phone and accept the call. Accept the call because everyone will not get that call. Don't be the person who missed the call of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Come to Jesus today. Get on the narrow road of salvation and eternal life. Become fishers of men and help build God's kingdom. If you are already on that narrow road, God bless you. Be sure to pick up someone today and show them, talk to them about God, our Father, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit as our God. Romans 13 11 says, this is all the more urgent for you know how late it is Time is running out. Wake up, for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Matthew 24, 32-33 says, Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches buds and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, you can know his return is very near, right at the door. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Philippians 4.19 says, In the same and this same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Revelations 3.20-21 says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. See, we have to give Jesus our time and seek him. He has already said he is standing at the door and has knocked. It's up to us to open the door of our heart and welcome him in and jump on the narrow road to receive salvation and allow him to arm us with the proper tools before the great war. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 says, A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, 
against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. See, the devil is great at being deceitful and telling lies. And the belt of truth, the belt of God's truth, can and will defeat any of the devil's lies. When the devil attacks our own wicked hearts through our emotions and identity, identity, God's amazing body armor, the breastplate of righteousness, protects our heart for God's approval and no one else's. The good news shoes allows us to stand on God's words and proclaim his promises and peace when Satan is saying the good news is not good at all but is worthless. God's shield of faith protects us from Satan's arrows that come in the form of temptations, money, sexual immorality, anger, and stress. The shield of faith allows us to know Satan is unable to do anything without God's permission and that through our trials and tests that we have the faith to believe and stand on his promises and his word. The helmet of salvation protects our minds from being clouded with doubt and bad judgments. And the sword of the spirit is the only offensive weapon God gives us. Satan does not like to hear God's words. So when it's used, he runs. Ephesians 6, 18 through 20 says, Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. And be persist, persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere and pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plans. That the good news is for the Jews and Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, all those hearing my voice will have a magnum amazing day and leave a legacy doing legendary things by utilizing the given instructions of your word and implement those things by serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ using the greatest gift by showing love and leading people to the salvation of their souls through Jesus Christ and that our purpose prayerfully is your blessing. God bless.